Hello, my name is Julius Wilder. I'm here with Dr. Amit Singhal. He's an associate professor at UT Southwestern. He's the medical director of the liver tumor program there, as well as the clinical chief of hepatology. And he's here to talk to us about his recent review on hepatic adenomas. We appreciate you being here with us. Um, that review is fantastic, and it's a review about something that we see quite often in, in terms of our practice. Um, when you think about the general importance of that paper, what are some of the takeaways that you would have for us? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so, you know, I think the first thing is, as you said, this is a common condition that we will see in clinical practice. Um, as you know, most of these tend to happen predominantly in women, and they can happen at young ages. And so the nice thing is that actually now with increasing imaging, most of these are actually found at an early, you know, small size. Um, it's important that these do have complications. So unlike some of the other benign liver lesions, like focal nodular hyperplasia, these can have malignant transformation, they can rupture. So these liver lesions do need to be followed because of this small but present risk of complications. So even though they're small, it's important to also remember that these tend to be hormone responsive. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things you want to do when you see these patients is to ask if they're on oral contraceptives. And if so, the first step in management is to stop the oral contraceptives and then simply follow that patient. There are some patients that may actually need more aggressive management and may need surgical resection. There's some groups such as men who actually are more likely to have beta-catenin mutated adenomas, which have a higher risk of malignant transformation. And so if you find an adenoma in a man, you're more likely to do early surgical resection. If it's exophytic, um, if it has a large size, then those are also risks for um, other complications such as rupture and or malignant transformation. And so given those features, you would be more likely to pursue early surgical resection. Yeah, thank you, that's wonderful because, you know, um, we see it all the time and, and the one thing that gets extremely scary for us is when you're dealing with a young woman, uh, she has this decent sized adenoma there uh, and she may be wondering about the issue of pregnancy. Yeah. Um, and, and she may or may not at the time be on OCPs. And so, you know, when you see that in your, in your practice, how do you approach those patients? Yeah, it's, it's a great question because you're right. I mean, once again, because these tend to occur in young females, this is something that if you, see, if you have patients with adenomas, this is something that you really need to counsel the patient on in terms of the risk of significant growth that can, be, that can happen in the setting of pregnancy. Now, you know, this has really been an evolving field because traditionally, if you talk about 20 years ago, we used to talk about pregnancy being quote unquote contraindicated. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. And we really moved away from that concept to more of a concept of shared decision making, informing your patients and discussing about the risks. And what you need to do is you need to talk, about, talk to your patients so they understand that there is a risk of um, actual growth, which may increase the risk of complications. And when you talk to your patients, you can even talk about management styles such as resecting before actually becoming pregnant or close observation during pregnancy. But I think that the big thing, and I think that's been the major shift over time, is that we should not be telling our patients they cannot become pregnant. It really is more so discussing the risks and discussing possible management strategies. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Singal, for that, that very informative uh, discussion that's so helpful on an issue that we see all the time. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us. For more information, please visit cldlearning.com.